What's going on guys? It's Pirocchi Server here. Coming at you with a new pumpkin beer special. So, first things first, we gotta cut this baby up. We gotta take all the seeds straight on out. I feel like this is the safest way. You know, cutting a pumpkin isn't always as easy as it looks. Could there be a better way? Probably. Do I really care? No, not really. Oh shit. This is fucking hard. God damn. That one seems easier to do. So yeah, so I mean, a, a lot of what we're doing here is actually preparing for the brew day. So a lot of this has to be done multiple days ahead of the brew day because you want this stuff to be good and ready. That way when you go to brew, you got all your ingredients and you're ready to just pop off. You know what I'm saying? So this is about what I'm doing is about two days, three days before my actual brew day is I'm starting my starters now, which you'll see in a second here. And I'm also starting my pumpkin roasts here. Do a little scoopy scoop action here. What you want to be doing here is you want to take that spoon and you want to scoop it all out of here. The spoon is easy because it it just takes out those those seeds and that little goop, that little Halloween goop, takes out real nice. Alright, so we're going to put on a little bake action. What you want to do is put that sucker on 370. There we go. Start that up. Pretty heat. In the meantime, you can start laying out your slices. Get those all over here. Next thing you gotta do is you get a little brown sugar. And you gotta get this thing, and you gotta do you gotta do this like you're looking to get this stuff sweet. You just get that all over. I'm gonna rub it in a little bit. A little, a little slap. Alright, once you got that oven at 375, it's time to put the pumpkin in it, baby. Alright, so these things have been in here for about two and a half hours. The smell right now? Insane. Insane. Absolutely insane. So we're going to put a little muffin in there. Cut 
Next thing we're going to do is wrap it up. So all of that finished pumpkin. We're going to wrap that up. day was an adventure. Uh, here you're seeing some of the salt additions we had. Uh, we did a mash and sparge salt addition. Uh, with that, we started out with some RO water. I always start with RO water because I don't really like the water I have currently at my house until I get an upgraded setup. Um, but basically, at RO, you're starting with nothing, and I, you know, basically salted up the water with baking soda chalk, gypsum, Epsom salt, regular salt, uh, calcium carbonate, uh, some other, I think some other ones there, but I don't have the list in front of me. But uh, you should be able to see it here in a second. And uh, once I added all those salts, uh, I was ready to mash in. Uh, just a note, everyone's salt additions will be different because depending on what kind of water you use, it's gonna be a little bit different. So uh, hang tight on another video in the future and we'll talk about salt additions. Now the mashing is pretty simple. Pour the grain into the water. Whoa, crazy, right? Now it gets a little bit more deeper than that in that you need to make sure that when you're pouring it in, you're pouring it in slow and you're stirring at the same time. The reason for this is because you don't want to get dough balls. Dough balls are your enemy here. You don't want them in there because then the water is not going to be able to penetrate the grain. And you're not going to get a really good mix and you're not going to be able to extract all those sugars so your efficiency is most likely going to go down. Alright, so after you get the mash all nice and mixed up, you want my personal decision is that I always give at least 15 minutes for the, uh, the mash and everything to settle and all the grain to settle and create a nice grain bed without any channels. Um, and so I give it about 15 minutes with no recirculation pump on yet and just let all that grain settle in that water and create a nice bed. Uh, the thing that you don't want is for it to create channels. And once it creates channels, then it's going to bypass and it's going to find the path of least resistance with the water when you turn the pump on. And you're not going to get a really good efficiency. You're not going to get that water penetrating and sucking through all the grain and recirculating properly. But after mashing in, at 155 for about 60 minutes, um, I do a Vorlof for about 10 minutes to clear everything up. Uh, that just makes sure that you know any major particles that are in the pump or anything like that are uh, Vorlof onto the top of the grain bed and that everything kind of creates this sort of filter situation. After that, I pump it all into the boil kettle and then as I'm pump pumping it into the boil kettle, I actually sparge over top of the grain bed and that way I'm extracting all those leftover sugars that could possibly be in that, uh, in that grain bed still and just kind of almost rinse or wash the grain bed of all of this uh, sugars and all the good stuff that's in it. Um, this really increases my efficiency really well, so that's why I do it and uh, you can see that there. So as everything heats up to boil, I got my, uh, my pumpkin and my hops and my brown sugar all ready to go. Um, pushed most of that pumpkin, or got most of that pumpkin pushed up into that mesh bag. Uh, reason for that is because the pumpkin was still in pretty large particulates and I don't want that clogging up the pump. So I used one of my old hot mesh bags that uh, seemed to do the trick really well. Um, and so I shoved it all in there and you can see that there. Um, the other thing there is that after that, I took a specific gravity and a pH of my pre-boil. Uh, the pre-boil, specific gravity, I believe, fell out of 1.045, and the pH was about like 5.3, and so uh, the, the pH was fine, not a big deal. Uh, the specific gravity was a little bit lower than what my brewfather app had uh, determined was supposed to be the specific gravity for my boil off and all that good stuff, and so uh, it was a little bit, a little bit low, like I said, but the, it's honestly not a big deal, because what that just means is I'm just going to like... I'm just going to boil off some more water. 
So at the end, it might be a little bit more boil time, but that's all good, and we'll get to where we want to go. Once the boil really started rolling, uh, I started my 90 minute timer. And uh, with that, I added at 90 minutes, the pumpkin and the brown sugar. Um, those both went in, easy peasy, just stir them in, make sure the brown sugar doesn't like burn on the bottom or anything like that. And then at 60 minutes, I added in my one ounce of Warrior Hot. Uh, this was actually different than the original recipe that I was basing off of, but uh, at my local homebrew store, they also brew a lot of beer, like really good beer. And they had recently brewed their pumpkin beer and the guy was like, look dude, this is, the, this is the hop you want to use. So I went with their suggestion, and honestly, it tastes awesome. Finally, with five minutes left in the boil, I added two teaspoons of nutmeg, two teaspoons of ginger, and 10 teaspoons, I believe, of cinnamon. Um, all of those I got from a local spice shop uh, in my area. Um, I felt like that was the best move to make rather than going like food line since I put in the time to bake the pumpkin and everything like that. Um, if it was an easy peasy pumpkin brew, I would have probably just settled with pumpkin spice, but this felt like the right thing to do and it definitely turned out awesome. I mean, this beer is freaking sick, dude. So I made a yeast starter for this beer. Um, main, I mean, I usually make a yeast starter for most of my beers regardless, but this one especially because I was brewing about 12 to 13 gallons of fermented beer in the fermenter. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I had really good uh, yeast that was ready to rock and roll. So I made a, uh, a big starter. I took two WLP 0002 English Ale White Labs yeast. Um, I took two of those packets, dumped them in, took one proper can, um, dumped that in, and then I let that stir up on a stir plate for I think like two days before the brew day. Um, by the time that it was done, oh my gosh, you could see the yeast just starting to cake up. I mean, that thing was getting like insane. It was ready to rock. So it was perfect timing, and so I dumped it in and let that thing ride. So before cold crashing and kegging the beer, um, the recipe called for six teaspoons of vanilla extract added into the fermenter. Um, this is based off the 12 to 13 gallon batch size. So um, personally, before I did that, I did a little dilution factor and uh, figured out how much to take off the fermenter and then add like, I think like maybe it was like a half a mil to, to the cup and to get an idea of what it tasted like because the vanilla kind of really struck me a little weird, especially since I was tasting the beer out of the fermenter and it tasted awesome. Like it tasted great already. Um, but after tasting it, um, with the dilution factor, I was kind of like, you know what, this is kind of like a Cook's situation where it was like these flavors were meant to go together and it really made it out, a, it made a really nice rounded pumpkin ale. Um, so it really gives that vibe of pumpkin pie rather than just a pumpkin ale. Uh, so I went with it and I figured, you know, if I didn't like it, the next time I just, I just do less or do without it completely. So the beer turned out like, turned out really fucking dope. I mean, this beer is really good. Uh, everyone I've given it to loves it. Um, it. It really came out with that pumpkin pie color. I don't know if that's really from the pumpkin. You know, that's always up for debate. I don't think a lot of color comes from the pumpkin, but I think most of that color comes from the malt and the malt choice, whatever. But um, it does lend to like a very small brownish, um, foam, which is really cool, really, really, really smallish brown uh, head, I guess you could call it. I am no shape or form to be a describer, so take this all, all this shit with a grain of salt. I'm not the guy to know this stuff. But, I mean, if I was to describe it, I'd say it's a solid pumpkin beer. That's all I got. Alright guys, that's the end of this one. It's been a long one. I hope it was a lot of fun for you guys out there. Um, if you found it fun, entertaining, educational, in any way, like and subscribe. Give me some of that loving. And then also go in the comments. Show me some love. Let me know who you are. I want to know who you are. Periodically Sober Brewing. Out until next time.